All right, hello everyone. Um, so today I will uh, speak about a uh, jump back to 2016 iOS jailbreaking. Um, so yeah, first of all, uh, who am I? So my name is Tommy Tokic. I'm 16 years old and I'm interested in iOS jailbreaking since I started hacking, which was about three years ago or so. And in fact, I actually started hacking um, because of iOS jailbreaking. I, I was always kind of interested in iOS type of stuff. However, I only started working on iOS about a year ago, and this is due to the fact that I was actually working on small uh, CDF challenges and stuff like that. And I actually spoke here last year, um, and this year I actually got invited, and I really appreciate the invitation, so um, yeah. So this is the agenda for uh, today. So basically, first of all, I'm going to give a really, really short introduction to iOS jailbreaking. And then we're going to move on to the main parts, which is the, the, our two bugs and the um, some few patches to escalate privileges. So um, basically, uh, what is an iOS jailbreak? Well, so for the most people, it's actually Cydia, which is actually just a package manager where you can actually install tweaks from. And so that way, you, uh, it allows the user to, to customize uh, their iPhones or iPads uh, and if you download some tweaks from Cydia, you can modify your springboard, which is the home screen of the iPhone. And this is actually a lot more behind the scenes. And I actually wanted to learn more about this. And so this is why I kind of started with um, with, with, with iOS jailbreaks. Um, and uh, today I will actually cover a 32-bit iOS jailbreak. So there will be no software hardware mitigations such, such as KPP, KTRR, a pack, etc., which newer jailbreaks actually have to deal with. So that also means that we can actually patch the tax segment. So um, as we all know, uh, zero days are expensive. Uh, most of the jailbreaks are rely on already um, published vulnerabilities. And so uh, in these days, once we have the vulnerability exploited, what well, we actually want to set up some uh, read write primitives to uh, perform further patches. And so iOS actually builds around message passing um, and uh, uh, in iOS jailbreaking, uh, access to the toss port zero or, or the PID zero is a holy grail because that is the um, kernel pretty much. And if you have a send write to a port, um, that means you can actually modify so you can read write uh, its virtual memory. And obviously if you can read and write the kernel memory, you can apply further patches. Uh, now, obviously, Apple knows this, and um, uh, they want to protect the user from having access to the uh, a PID zero. Um, and uh, there is a call for task for PID zero, which will get you a send write if, if it is allowed. But obviously, uh, passing argument zero will return an error. Uh, and so we can see there is a comment in the code. Uh, so if PID equals to zero, um, then an error is returned uh, no matter who is calling. So, um, uh, yeah, we can see there is also uh, um, some hard coded checks in inside the code code base, and uh, we can patch this, for example, by uh, uh, in assembly checking for the compare, and instead of zero, we're gonna set to, for example, zero xff. And uh, so with the access uh, to the um, or having a send write to the kernel, we can read and write arbitrary bytes, as I explained previously, and many utilities need this uh, task repeat zero patch. Uh, for example, newer jailbreaks uh, use this uh, in order to set boot nonce so that the user can actually downgrade or upgrade to an unsigned iOS version if other uh, issues are not present. And uh, for example, I made a very basic tool called VM read write, which actually um, does what the name suggests, it reads and writes uh, the kernel memory if uh, it actually have the plus for pit zero patch enabled. And so this is how my tool looks, it's very, very simple, but uh, it, it's actually useful and also I actually made use of during the jailbreak development. So um, yeah, once we have sent write uh, to the kernel task and we can write its memory, we can actually escalate privileges. And uh, the main goal of this talk is to actually achieve root, so escalating privileges. And there are a bunch more things to do if we want to install Cydia and spawn SSH and so on. Uh, we would need to um, 
Escade Sandbox, uh, Patch AMFI, uh, Remount the Root File System, and so on. Uh, but I won't get into that in today's talk. So yeah, this is pretty much our uh, plan for the jailbreak. So we're gonna first make use of the info leak, then the memory corruption, and uh, then we're gonna make use of other stuff such as read write primitives and some patches. Uh, so before anything, I just want to mention that uh, as far as I know, this is and was the first um, Spyware jailbreak that uh, was actually used in the real world and um, uh, they actually attacked uh, this uh, Ahmed Human Rights Defender and um, he actually received an SMS uh, text uh, with a link and that was actually a trap, a one-click RCE and uh, he didn't actually click on the link, instead he actually sent to a group who analyzed the link and they realized that this was such an exploit and uh, I won't get into the WebKit uh, or the persistence because they actually had persistence exploit as well, uh, but rather only the two um, bugs which they are used, which is the info leak and the memory corruption. So um, this is the kernel info leak and uh, it's actually really, really simple. Uh, they uh, have a function and they uh, forget to check the length uh, variable, which we can see there and uh, so pretty much that way we can actually pass an arbitrary number and we can, if we can read back, uh, we can leak some kernel stack, which will be obviously the case. And uh, in order to exploit this, we need to craft a special dictionary. And so this is how the dictionary looks like. So first we have the magic number and this is actually needed in order to the function to accept our dictionary. Otherwise it will actually decline it. Uh, then we have a dictionary with two entries. And then we have a three byte AAA plus a null termination. And then we have our big size number uh, and uh, at least eight bytes for our big, num big number. And in a normal case scenario, you would be only be able to read these eight bytes back. But uh, obviously that's not the case at this point. And once we have our malicious dictionary set up, what we actually want to do is uh, read those data back. Uh, in order to leak uh, the bytes for us. And we're gonna do this uh, using IOKit. And if you don't know what is IOKit, I'm uh, just gonna, not gonna get into that, but just gonna say that it's pretty much used for iOS kernel and user space communication. Um, yeah, it, it's enough for that. And, but basically you can actually read these bytes back using IOKit. And uh, we're gonna look for the AAA property and we're gonna read from there. And this is the full KSLR defeat code. Now, I don't know whether can you see it uh, clearly or not, but it's actually really simple. It's just like 50 lines of code. Um, I just wanna, decided to throw it in here just to show that it, it in, indeed it is very simple. And uh, running the program uh, will result us with some debug messages that we can actually see the leaked address uh, where the function returned from and uh, taking the address and uh, applying, applying some calculations we can uh, get the kernel base and so how are we gonna do it well we're gonna have the array which is the buffer array, plus we're gonna add uh, the the offset to it to actually have it in the ninth position because for m sign is 36 some <laughs> some mats and uh, then we're gonna uh, mask it to one megabyte because it's always uh, gonna end with with five zeros and we're gonna adjust by one page because it starts at what uh, 8000 1000 so um, yeah, and after this, we actually have uh, the kernel base. And if you still want to calculate the KSLR slide, then it's really simple. What you want to do is take away uh, the base address, which is 8000 1000, and you will have the kernel ASLR slide. So, yeah, we can see that this is the kernel base, and uh, this is uh, the kernel side. So, this is the memory corruption bug, and uh, this is actually a kernel user for free. And this is due to a dangling of a string pointer in OS centralized binary. And so that means that again, we will need to craft a special dic dictionary in order to exploit this vulnerability. So, um, but before that, I actually want to explain how the uh, bug occurs. Uh, so basically we have a set of index macro uh, predefined for us. And what, what's interesting in here is that uh, it will actually save our objects to an object array um, 
and yeah, pretty much there is a special case in here, uh, which called a cave a serialized object, which what it does is actually will uh, call all retain on an object. And so what that means is we'll actually add one reference to the object. So uh, the object can be freed when uh, the uh, when the count drops to zero, but it, we can actually make it alive again with the call to retain. And so uh, exactly what happens here is there is an O string to O symbol cost, which will actually call O release, which will free the um, object saved to the objects array, um, which was just saved there. And so we uh, we can see there is the O release call, and uh, there is the call, if you remember from case here as object. So we can actually relocate the data with our custom uh, data and um, we can call actually or retain on it, which makes it a UAF scenario. And uh, again, for this, we need to make a special dictionary as well. Uh, so we, we're going to start by the magic again. Uh, then we have uh, a dictionary now with three entries. And we're going to start by triggering the OS string the allocation, where we actually cost it to an O symbol. And then we have uh, uh, the payload, or pretty much where we're gonna replace uh, the dangling read table pointer. And so this is the payload uh, with some random 0x40 buns. And then now we're gonna call the retain on the object. So now uh, it, it became, now when, when we, once we trigger the bug, it will, the kernel will actually crash because it will try to jump to an invalid address. However, if we actually run it, it will result such that the default address is 0x41, but we do not actually control the program counter. And so in order to do that, we actually need to craft a fake vtable. And so we can see that vtable pointer is pretty much a pointer to a vtable where there are function pointers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to craft a fake vtable where uh, instead of retain, we can actually point to our malicious recovered vtable, which can hold pretty much any value. And I decided to place 42 there for for the record and um, yeah, so pretty much, but in order to pull this off, what we actually need to do uh, have is uh, a control data in kernel memory at the no at the known location. And uh, there are a few ways to put control data to uh, kernel memory from user land and uh, training set is actually using a different technique, um, but uh, th there are a few, few ways as I said. So uh, I'm actually focusing on Mac message at this point and um, Mac messages use IPC and uh, we can actually send or receive using a Mac message call and there is no uh, Mac message send or re receive. Instead, there is an option which where we can specify whether we want to send the message or receive the message. And uh, so pretty much this is how sending a message works um, visually. So we have task one and we want to send to task two. What we're going to do is, well, we're going to send it to the kernel. The kernel uh, will allocate some space for the data and it will send it to task two. And when it, uh, the task two receives it, uh, the kernel will free uh, its space and wait for another message to reallocate or it will stay there completely freed. So basically, I think you already guessed what we will, what we will do. Uh, we're going to send uh, it again, but instead, now we're not going to receive it. And so our data will stay in actually in the kernel. So that way we can actually have control data in kernel memory where we actually send from user space. And so history can actually be achieved by sending a bunch of data, but not actually receiving them. So uh, we can see that if you not receive, it will actually stay in the kernel. And also we can do he feng shui uh, uh, by sending a bunch of data and only receiving a few. So we send a bunch of like, for example, AAA and we only receive a few. We actually eventually poked holes around the heap, but yeah. And uh, so going on with our technique, what we're going to, what we are going to do, we are going to allocate a Mac port with a Mac port write receive. And so we actually will have a send write to it and we're going to send uh, a, a message to it. In my case, I'm going to send 0x4242 to it. 
and uh, instead of receiving, I choose not to. And uh, however, uh, now we left with one little problem, and that is that, okay, we can actually send some data to the kernel, uh, but we don't know where the data will end up. However, uh, uh, when we are doing the info leak part, we're making a use of a call to IO registry and to get property, and uh, the make command carries a, a Mac message pointer. So eventually we'll send a Mac message as well, and it will actually free it, but if we send our message at the right point in time, we can actually relocate with our message. So Again, the good thing about this is that we actually leak this address um, while we're actually leak leaking other um, uh, addresses. And so uh, the versions I tested is always ending with B8. So um, uh, if you're actually jailbreaking, we can actually read from this address. Um, uh, and this is actually, sometimes it's really good to actually have an already jailbreaking device to actually develop a, a jailbreak. So yeah, we can see uh, this is where I actually make use of uh, my VM read write tool, where I actually um, get, got that data and I started to read from it. And eventually I saw my message uh, appear in, in the kernel heap. And so I, what we can do now is actually we uh, craft our payload in such a way that we'll actually point here. So yeah, I, as I said, we need to craft the payload uh, with the message address. And after that, we actually have a, uh, control over the program counter. And so, yeah, we can see, uh, we actually do control the program counter if we uh, do it like this. And uh, yeah, so we can actually now start um, patching. And uh, however, uh, we actually have control over the program counter, but when, whenever we call this trigger UAF function or trigger the UAF, it will actually panic the device. And we need a way to keep the kernel alive because obviously in order to jailbreak it, you have to keep the kernel alive and apply patches in the runtime. And uh, we can actually do that by replacing uh, retain with, with a le legitimate function. And uh, uh, yeah, so that function will um, be always serialized, serialized. And this is how the final payload should look like. So we have the address of uh, copy in then we have some address from the stack and uh, then we have our real address of the payload uh, some values and again the gadget and so this is how the OS serialized serialized gadget looks like so first of all uh, we actually do control r0 so at this point in time we're gonna control r3 as well uh, and then we're gonna control r1 as well because again we control r0 and lastly we're gonna control r 12 as well, which is really good because we actually have a branch to R12, which means that we actually uh, can have an executive primitive. And uh, uh, this is how my payload actually looks like. So again, I have uh, the address for copy in uh, from my payload and have some random data. Then we actually have the payload pointer, which is the message where we sent. And you notice that I actually take away some bytes and this is due to the fact that it's not exactly located at, at the address where we actually send the message. It will be a bit below, but um, we can actually locate that. Um, again, if you're jailbroken, it's really, really easy. Just a simple matter of reading from the address. And uh, then we have our gadget, which will be the always serialized serialized gadget again. So yeah, I actually just kind of rushed it, but um, uh, yeah, this is how it looks. And uh, so once we have that, th the kernel will stay alive. So we actually need now to set up the read write primitives. And uh, I'm again, I'm, I'm using the same gadgets as the shrine I'm using. So um, we are going to make use of some clock services. And for the read primitive, we're going to make use of the uh, battery clock. So um, basically, um, we, we're going to design the payload in such a way that uh, it will contain pointers to handle functions. And when we actually call the callback functions, the payload uh, will replace the getTTR handlers and the getTTR uh, will actually point to our buff.ttr CPX. 
So yeah, we can see that what it will do is actually read from R0 to R0. So uh, it's perfect for our read primitive. And uh, again, uh, for executing primitive, we're gonna make use of the clock service and we're gonna replace now instead of real time clock, get a TTR function. And we will replace it with the always serialized serializer serialize function, which I actually explained earlier by it's good for uh, for our executive primitive because we can actually have arguments and uh, yeah, we're gonna branch to a control address. And this is how the payload uh, will look like. Uh, it will rely on some on the on this gadget. So we we gonna have the uh, some bytes of random data to make it uh, to make it executable and then we actually have uh, two arguments and we have the address what we actually want to execute and uh, in order to actually execute the code or the address we actually need uh, to place some bytes before the first argument and after that uh, we actually after we have actually have the executive primitive set up uh, a write primitive is really really simple uh, all we actually need is just a write gadget because we can actually execute uh, the gadget using our uh, executive primitive. And so there is this uh, uh, write gadget, which we're going to make use of. So pretty much we have a, a store instruction, which we're going to, which going to store whatever inside R1, which we actually control to R0 plus 0xc, but we're going to take away 0xc, uh, so 12 from the address. So it will be actually correct where we're going to actually store uh, the value the data and so basically the post exploitation uh, part which is actually not tied specifically to these exploit or, or these bugs um, the this can be applied to pretty much 32 bits or um, yeah any other jailbreaks um, and yeah so first of all we're gonna actually patch pmap because um, at the MMU level pages are actually read execute and are not read write execute execute except for JIT pages uh, for mobile Safari. And there are usually three levels of page tables. And uh, in, in order to actually patch this, which is, this is realistically not even a patch uh, to actually get the PMAP address. Uh, what we are actually going to do is get the address of the PMAP pointer and we're gonna check for page entries and block entries. And in case if it's a page entry, what we're going to do is uh, uh, a physical address uh, is actually another set of TTEs. So we're going to loop one more time and unset the bits. And in case it's a, a block entry, what we're going to do is just simply unset the bits. Um, uh, so yeah. And after setting all the bits, uh, pages can be uh, read by execute. And now we can uh, perform further patches. And uh, so bas basically this is the task for pit zero patch, which again, to uh, this is needed in order to have a send write to the um, kernel task. And once we have uh, basically our write primitive, uh, we can pretty much patch really, really easily um, to allow uh, zero as an argument, uh, task for pid uh, call. And uh, we can actually, after we actually have this write, uh, uh, VM write, we can actually patch pretty much any other thing. And so we're gonna actually patch only three compressed. It's actually really, really simple to patch uh, for TOS for PID0. But again, uh, on newer uh, devices and newer versions, uh, th this is actually not really possible anymore due to the fact that Apple introduced KPP and KTRR and PAC and basically all the other stuff. And so, but yeah, we're gonna focus on the 30 to be only. So yeah, this is the pit check. And uh, so we can see there is the comparison, which I actually showed earlier uh, with the zero, whether if PID is equals to zero, if it is, it will just branch an error. And so we actually want to patch this to compare within our rally like FF. Uh, once we have that, what we actually want to do is actually we want to patch the POSIX check, uh, which is again, a really, really simple uh, just a comparison to R0 with 0. Uh, we're going to patch that as well. And then we have actually have the Mac Pro check. And uh, again, if you just just pretty much dig around, you, you easily find this uh, place and you, you can actually patch uh, this comparison as well. 
and pretty much after this we can uh, have uh, uh, send write to the kernel task so we can actually use the vm read and vm write uh, calls so we can actually write the kernel memory and now we can actually escalate privileges which as i said was pretty much the main uh, idea of this talk and um, yeah so there are um, other ways to patch it and uh, you can either like null out the check uh, null out all these checks or you can actually skip the check which i actually did so pretty much we can see it's actually a uh, branch to uh, ab370 and uh, uh, what what we actually want to do because that's actually the if, if case so what we want to do is dig around and find uh, at the end of the uh, the checks and we got we want to branch there so basically um, once we found that what we actually want to do is uh, write uh, the new address the branch address instead so um, the offset so instead it's actually going to branch off the uh, the uh, if check so we can see how it looks like so it's going to branch here and uh, uh, this is how it looks in the hex editor so it's actually e009 the offset and so pretty much we're going to patch this uh, with 40E0 and you actually have to calculate the offsets and uh, you can then really easily um, get with the hex to arm uh, site which is really really helpful in this case because you can really really easily uh, get what you actually need uh, to put there so yeah um, this is after the patch we can see it's a completely different address and it's just gonna pretty much skip the if case and so we can actually after this we can uh, call set review id so yeah we can see uh this is the first case the original where it's actually not patched and it just calls uh goes to the if checks and this is the patch where it's a completely different address it's 3de and it will just pretty much just keep the uh, if case and after running uh, uh, this, the, this patch, we can actually call set view ID with a zero. So after that, we actually escalated privileges. And so, yeah, there you go. And we can see that uh, I actually have UID 501 first, which is mobile, uh, which is actually normal in, in, in iOS, which, well, we are actually uh, in normal case. And uh, after that, we can see um, I'm actually UID zero, which means I'm actually root. And also, if you don't believe me, um, you can see the code is actually, uh, I'm calling get UID. So, um, yeah. And if you're actually interested in this project or just want to get the source code or just try it out, you can actually get this on my GitHub. Uh, it's actually called broke. Um, and so, yeah, you can go ahead and download it and, uh, yeah. And lastly, I actually want to give a huge shout out to all these people because this project or the talk wouldn't be possible without them. So um, yeah, I, I want to give them a big shout out to QWERTY, Saguza, JN Doc, Benjamin, IB Sparks, uh, Ben and Billy Ellis because they really, really helped me um, while I was doing this. And they, yeah, they, they, they were really nice people. So yeah. And now if you actually have any questions, I believe uh, you can actually ask on Discord, I think, but I'm not really sure. But uh, you can always tweet me at Tomitokic or at ions0uido. Um, uh, so yeah, um, thank you for your attention.